Hello once again viewers and welcome to another edition of the Underground Show. We are very privileged to have all of you this evening for us joining to discuss an issue concerning women and fulfilling a, a political promise that has been on the ground. We're very grateful once again that you've made time to be part of this show. And this evening we come your way, we come into the comfort of your rooms with no other person but the mother, sorry, I wouldn't even say the mother, of the National Democratic Congress, but we're coming into the room with a lady who has a passion for the National Democratic Congress, who holds National Democratic Congress at the heart and has been defending the party right from the way it go. You could recall, uh, if you are at the early days, where you could find a very wonderful female lady on the set, dishing it out with people, the likes of uh, Susan Koenu of uh, CPP and the rest, and she is still on the move. Wherever you are, once again, you are welcome to On The Ground Show, which is being carried live on the social media handles of Ben Wyo GH. And we are going right away into a great discussion with this wonderful lady. Uh, some of you will be wondering who this person is. Very often we hear she's from the United States of Tachimatia. And uh, now we have... Uh, we have been given a better correction that she's from Dafiema, and definitely she has to tell us something about ourselves, about herself. So to all of you up there, we have the privilege of presenting to you Honorable Dr. Hannah Luisa Bissu, the National Women's Organizer of the National Democratic Congress. So this evening she comes on the show to tell us more about what is going on in the party what she's going to do, and how the NDC is putting itself together to go ahead to defend whatever is at stake for us. Before we ask uh, Dr. Hanabisio to just give us a welcome address, we want to recap a little song, and from there we shoot it. So Mr. Producer, can you give us that song? It's so touching, we want to discuss a bit of it. Let 
Great. So, Honorable Dr. Hanabisu, you are most welcome to the program. I believe we're running into a technical challenge and the producer will have to try to resolve that. But this song that we just played, uh, all of us sang this song very well during the, uh, the World Cup games. And uh, it was Ghana Black Stars, go up there, do or die. And for, fortunately for us, we went up there, we came back, we did not kill, nobody died. And today, His Excellency, the former president, John Dramani Mahama, made a statement about do or die, and some people are going wild. Before we get into that, which is the core of our discussion this evening, we will give the opportunity to his uh, to Honorable Dr. Bisu to say a word, and then we shut up. Honorable, you are most welcome. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, uh, my host and the secretary of our German chapter, um, Dr. Jerome, and Thank you, leader, a presidential candidate, his wife, and his entire team. And I'll send my special greetings also to the national executives, the national chairman, our general secretary, through to the last person at the party national headquarters and also a special one to my able and capable two lieutenants um obapa abi and obapa mamifua and all my regional women organizers constituency women organizers branch women organizers and all my chapter women organizers and dc patrols i say good evening and i i want to also say a special good evening to my host the one who has actually kept me here and, and taking care of me. And I'm sure that secretary, you, you have to now do something, you know. Uh, you, you, I've, to, I've told that you shouldn't worry. You'll be bringing a very fact check to Auntie Maria. Um, so we're still having a bit of technical challenges, but I'm sure um, Dr. Hanabisu will soon be on the show. Wherever you are, once again, welcome to the Underground Show, where we say it as it is. And uh, we're here this evening to discuss, especially, the involvement of women in trying to fulfill the issue of uh, do or die. You know, definitely, the women are at the central point of any political activity. So, welcome back, Doc. That's a straight thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, and forgive me, I think I'm having some troubles, you know, yeah, it, it keeps connecting. Yes. And so I uh, haven't said that. Um, I think just recently, President Mahama made a statement. Okay, good. Just recently, he made a statement about the NDC not going to court anymore. Wow. Hello. Yes. Um, okay. No, so I'm, I'm trying to see if I can fix it on another um, another You can hear me? Okay. So... Hey, Josh! Suzuza! Let's go. 
Okay. Yes, Dr. Anabis, you are back on stage. Yeah, I, I think I think now now we I think it's more stable. It's more stable. I had to yeah, change switch. positions. And so I was saying that His Excellency John Dramani Mahama recently um declared that we as a political party and as a people, we were going to um, do it. The police centers was going to be a do or die affair because we're not going to go to court anymore. And we'll come to the hypocritical cries of some Ghanaians, some section of, uh, of, of of Ghanaians. But for us as women, from the day that President Nanadu declared and legalized armed robbery in Ghana, from the day that President Nanadu decided to deceive Ghanaians and use a coup d'etat to reinstate himself as a president of Ghana, we realize that come 2024, it had to be a do or die affair. Come 2024, it's going to be a civil uprising where we're going to defend the second independence of Ghana and Ghanaians at large. And as women, if today, when the hog goes to attack the chickens, the chicks of a hen, it's not the cock who defends the chicks, but it's the hen. Or when a female dog puts to bed and you go closer to that dog, if it's not the male dog who defends the puppies, but it's the woman who defends the puppies, then this do or die affair is a women affair. It's more for us than even the men. But there's not a single man in this world who was not who was not um, brought to this world by a woman. Number one, and we have realized that if we sit back and we watch, they will kill us. They will kill our husbands. They will go and kill our children. So for the protection of our children, as women, market women, professionals, housewife. Farmers, cleaners, hawkers, petty traders, what have you. It's a call to duty for us. And so we started working from day one to make sure that the right things are in place and to prepare ourselves. You see, when he spoke about do or die, people are just running you know, jump and left, right, center, and hypocritically criticizing and some having the audacity to ask him to retract. And I was asking whether it's a dream or it's real that Nanadu is the president of Ghana. 
if it's real that he is the president of Ghana, then it will be it will be hypocritical on anybody's part to request that His Excellency John Draman Mahama should retract a do or die. Yes, it's going to be a do or die. And the role of women is that we work hard, especially with those in the NDC and those who sympathize with us. We need to move from region to region, constituency to constituency, branches to branches, market to market, house to house. And it started not today, but December 2020. Because what happened in December 2020, my sweetheart, was a pure arm robbery. Because an arm robber is the one who uses a gun or anything that they can use to harm you, to rob you. November 2020, President Anado deceived, as usual of him, scam the security agencies and credited their accounts with 40 million, 50 million cities. Um, I think that the lowest they were in the um, 40s or 30 million. That's 4,000, 5,000. And these security officers, that's men and decided to thank him on December 7th by aiding him with their guns and bullets to kill Ghanaians so that they could rob us of our will. They robbed us of our votes. They robbed us of our right to independence. They robbed us of our right to voice out what we don't like through the ballot. And so the system we have today in Ghana is not um, a democratic system, no. It's a kudocracy system. It's a coup d'etat. But because the president is so good at coming us, they put a ballot, you go, they kill you, and they put him there, whether you like it or not. Why do I say so? People go to work and they say, oh, you went to court. Check the political or the electioneering history of our country. Check it from intrapolitics elections, from unit committee elections, district assembly elections, parliamentary elections, by elections. There has never been a single time where even the district electoral returning officer of electoral commission has ever declared results and changed his or her declaration. And in Akan, or in a local language, there's a saying that the liar has many tongues. That's it, and truth also. Lies, there are many, but truth is always one. Mm -hmm. So the liar always has different, different versions. She can never swear up to Antwa or to any, any of the deities that we have in our country because they believe in that. All this uh, swearing and cursing started with Nanado. They believe in that. She can never swear that the, de the, 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 the declarations that she made were her own figures. No. The declaration that she made are declarations from her appointing authority, Nana Adodankwa Akufu Ado, and his NPP. That is why he cha she changed the results seven times. And the first one, she had more than 100%. That's desperation, where the people say, we don't want you. And you say, oh, by all means, I will be your president whether you like it or not. And the difference between President Anadu and the Guinea Conakry Kenel Mamadi is that Kenel Mamadi is human-centered. 
So he killed nobody. And Kenna uh, Mamadik, you know, did his coup d'etat because he wants to fight corruption, injustice in the system. But President do, Leonardo killed Ghanaians. Dr. Davisu, let's get something clear here. In Guinea, is that coup a successful coup? Because I'll yes, I'll because there. Uh, <laughs> yes, you see, you see, that is the dishonesty and inconsistency of our president Anato. And he keeps embarrassing Ghanaians, embarrassing the country, and then he hides behind old age and say, So if you are if you're an old man, you do what old people do. You respect old age. So you don't misbehave. You and then you, you 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 say don't talk because I'm an old man. He's he's very indisciplined now. He claimed it wasn't a successful coup. So I want to ask him, what did his foreign minister, um, uh, Monrabu Ayokobo uh, What did she go to do in Guinea, Conakry, to go and speak exactly. with who? Was it with the president or with Kenya Mamadi? He's a he's the chairman of ECOWAS. <laughs> Why didn't he go himself to, <laughs> to Guinea? He should have gone. You know, so is that this honesty and inconsistency of President Anad? And the difference, I said, this man is wiser than him. You see, President Anad is not leading as a president, he's living a, a, a childhood fantasy. Perfect. Okay, it's a fantasy. Oh, I was some president. president, and you see his perseverance, he persevered. For years, and I've been saying that people voted for him. Um, 2016, those people who voted, by the time he started contesting, wanted to be president, they were not born yet, or they were maybe just a year old. That is how long he has been persevering to be president. So it's not because he wants to lead us. He wants to just accomplish some fantasy. Okay? It, I want this car, so I'll do everything to get it. Meanwhile, you don't know how to drive. I love, uh, look, I love this, is it Airbus 380? I love all those things, you know? Uh, if you give to me, maybe I'll be happy, but I cannot pilot a plane. So if I attempt to pilot even an helicopter, you know what is going to happen? <laughs> It'll crash. Definitely. I have um, a drone at home, Phantom 4K. My little boy started fixing it, and I said, no, you put it down. Then he asked, mommy, do you know how to fly a drone? I said, no. And his next question was, if you don't know how to fly a drone, why do you buy a drone? And I thought it was a very deep question from a boy of five years old. I love it. It's a fantasy. But my own is I kept it down. You kept it down? Yes, because I know if I fly, it will crash. If I get somebody who can fly and the person meets it, I'll give it out. But definitely I'll not attempt. I'm not like Nanato. He's living a childhood fantasy of me. He wants to be president because the father was a ceremonial president. So this man has come to impose himself on Ghanaians. He is a very, very bad leader. And in fact, the only thing that he has succeeded in doing is failing. But sometimes I look at him and say, in his incompetency, if you should evaluate him, you still fail in his incompetency. So in his state of failure, he still fails within it as a leader. And that is a fact. And the trouble we are having as a nation is hypocrisy. But sometimes I don't blame Ghanaians. When you have a government that is rusted like a nail, rusted nail, and at the least criticism, it will come looking for you to hurt you. They are afraid to step on it. And so that difference, as I was saying, between Nanado and Kenel Mamadi is that this Kenel is human-centered. This Kenel came to fight injustice, corruption, inequalities, um, um, impunity, um, 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 disrespect, The free robbery, what have you? Nanadu came to do the opposite. He killed Ghanaians. 
He's come as security agencies. And why do I say he's come then? He deceived them with those monies. And before the end of December 2020, he debited. Mm -hmm. He took away. He took away those monies from their various accounts. Because they had finished accomplishing what he wanted them to accomplish for him. Kill Ghanaians so that I become the president. Kill them so that I can come and then corruption will start fighting me. Kill them so that there will be more injustice in the system. Kill them so that I will come and now borrow money in the name of Ghanaians and spend the money with my family members. Kill them so that all my family properties that I've sold over the years in trying to be president, I'll be able to now fulfill, provide for the family and make myself comfortable. Kill them so that I can now dip in impunity and injustice in Ghana. Kill them so that I can continue to store the development of our country. Kill them so that I can continue to destroy the educational system of our country. Kill them so that I can continue to destroy the agriculture of Ghana. Kill them so that I can continue to destroy the health system in our country. Kill them so that the infrastructure development of Ghana shall continue to go down. Kill them so that I can come and deepen the culture of silence and intimidate journalists and kill journalists. Kill them so that I can send Ghana backwards 20, 30 years. Kill them so that I can bastardize the democracy that brought me into office 2016. And so when, if you're a woman and you are in the system and you sit down for fear of being attacked, fear of, you know, um, being intimidated, I will not go because of my children. I think women, we need to rise up for the sake of our children, for the sake of Mother Ghana. Today, as women, when we go to the market, we are not safe anymore. Women used to, you know, or usually we wake up at dawn and we will go to the lorry parks, stay there, probably take, you know, um, transport to a different location to go purchase, you know, smoke fish or what have you, transport them back. But the security of Ghana now is not there anymore. Now when you're out and it's 10 p.m., your family members are calling you. When our mothers go to the market, they have to rush and come back home. Meanwhile, what they send to the market, people cannot even afford to buy. The education of our children has been thrown to the dogs. And now we say that you see, um, if your mother-in-law is dead and you claim that she's sleeping, two weeks, nobody will have to announce her death or her funeral. President Anado has completely and totally destroyed the education of our children. He brought this junior high. A free senior high. At the time, President John Dramani Mahama advised that, look, you need stakeholders meeting because the way you started it, it cannot survive. They insulted him and continued. Less than a year, they went to work and turned the system to um, double track. But even before the double track, when they started the free senior high, they were doing it like a scholarship scheme then saying if you have this, you know, if you have a high average, 
a high grade or what have you, then you get scholarship. And I remember saying those days that if it was the time of President Leonardo, then he wouldn't have had that scholarship or that mm. free education because I know his grades were not good. Then we started screaming. Then they came down and said, everybody. Then now they said, double try. Double try because you don't even have the infrastructure. Let's just suppose that with John Dramani Muhammad. You see, that free senior high is nobody's idea. It's the idea of the framers of our constitution. constitution. And the framers of, of our constitution said in the, in the constitution that, look, there should first be availability, then accessibility, then you progressively will Leonardo and his government because they refuse to be part of the, you know, of, 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 of the, of the drafting of the constitution. The drafting of a, a constitution because they said they will not sit um, with fishermen, with with market women, with 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 farmers, with palm one tappers, with, with with those that they claim we are nobodies in the society. So refu they refuse to be part. And so John Ramani Mohammed's one was this. You see, if you want to tackle something, he'll tell you that do it holistically. Don't just target a group and rush through it because you won't vote. You are killing the country. President Dramani Mahama tackled a kindergarten, the primary schools, came to junior high, then senior high, and went off to a tertiary institutions. Because if you don't give the children the good foundation, and you bring them to senior high, they amount to nothing. And so he made sure that he did that. And then he did not leave it there. He said, look, when they leave the senior high, they, they have to go to tertiary institutions. So if you don't create the availability and accessibility in the tertiary institutions, it means that there will be a traffic jam. Now, President Dramani Mahama went to work and started implementing the infrastructure development of our educational system. After tackling the schools under trees, you know, training teachers for kin kindergartens and, 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 you know, tackling a junior high and a senior high at the same time and went to work with the e-blocks that was 200 in 200 communities. And there's going to be 200 different communities day community day schools and i always say that president nanado plagiarized the speeches of various american presidents but he refused to plagiarize the community day senior high school programs in the united states of america what was the concept of john Mahan? and then i'll come to what nanado has done yeah. to destroy our John Dramani Mohammed's own was that I'm given a school here, and I usually will use a Wapuli one. Wapuli is on its way to Chiripone. Mm -hmm. And why do I keep it? I have one in my community, but I normally will not use because you see, my own is Adema. So it's easily that you can say, okay, it serves about 50 communities. Okay. Okay. Wapuli says close to 100 communities. But when you are going to Wapuli, you just see this beautiful e yeah. with a school bus and a pickup. I was on my way to Shiponi. That was the time that there, there was a war, you know, and okay. there was this, um, I got the news that they had, you know, actually killed a lot of men in one village. And they had brought a lot of women, kept them in one room. And all my women were running away to go and sleep in the bush. So I decided that I was a woman and I couldn't have lived and stayed in Accra and then, you know, just be praying. No, you go there to encourage them, move with them, talk to them, and then see what, we, you know, one could do to support. When I just saw the school, I said, okay, John Mahama is here. So I alighted and I said, let me go there and find out. And one teacher that they say he's the only MPP on campus, the school came. And I asked him, okay, um, 
can you tell me the benefit of this edifice? And he told me that it has really come to relieve them. That it says close to 100 communities. Wapuli, yes, is big, but it's not big. Then he said the environs, the communities, the villages, the bus will go around the villages and bring students. And at the time that we were there, they were preparing their lunch. So they'll eat. After that, they'll transport them back to their various villages. That was the concept of John Mahama. 123 were given up for contract. About 77 were completed. The rest were at various levels of completion. There came the scam, one village, one dam scam, one constituency, one million dollars every year, another scam. One district, one factory, another scam. Every Ghanaian with bank account, another scam. They built heaven on earth in their manifesto. Gave a promise. Did everything. So President Dramani Mahama left. Nanadu came. Because he was starting the free senior high. But refused in an interview BBC to tell them where he was going to get the money from. And said he was going to tell Ghanaians. He knew he couldn't implement what he had promised. So let's fast forward to the, the uh, um, what is the name of the thing? The uh, double track. Simply because there's no infrastructure. You don't have it. John was going to do like my, my place, for instance, when he came and he commissioned the school. He gave us a bus and gave a pickup. And that's what he kept doing. So the first phase, which was going to be in full force from um, uh, 2017, 2018 academic year, what would have happened was that they would pick the students from their various communities, send them to school, feed them once, and then they would have been carried back to their various communities. But the second phase was going to involve the hostels, the boarding schools. In but remember that when you have 200 schools, and I'll not go even to the Wapuli, let me come to some of the minimum. My, my, my village is about 50 something communities, that it says. And you have 200 of such, you know, um, edifice scattered ac across the length and breadth of Ghana. You reduce the weight on boarding schools because you have created the availability and accessibility. Yeah. Then our statisticians would have sat down to now analyze a plus minus five, a narrow margin of how many students per the numbers that we have in our junior high will be entering the next year or probably the next two years, so they'll be able to prepare ourselves well in the senior high. Then per the data that you have with, uh, uh, with Ministry of Education, you will know that Hanabisu lives in village A, oh, my United States of Teaching <laughs> And then we have the Denmark Senior High, which is accessible to me. Yeah. And so if I'm in junior high and I'm going to senior high, they don't need, I, they'll still take me to where my, my school is, my village, yeah. my community. Now, let's say, um, secretary, Doc, you, uh, you live in, let's say, you are schooling in Sunyane and probably you live in another place where the school is not easily or readily accessible or per the load, they may not be able to take you there. So they will now check and say, okay, let's start the second phase from area one, area two. So we go adding the boarding schools. Remember that the constitution requires or demands of us to do it progressively. 
And they did it in their own wisdom, the framers of the constitution. And you see, you, you just, you cannot in, in, reinvent the wheel. And so what, 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 what will happen is that we know that the next two years, this number of students will be coming. And so if we have, let's say, 1,000 students, um, let's say 200 of them will need boarding. And so let's target area A, B, C boarding, and then we offload these borders, and then the rest will go to their communities and enjoy the senior high, free senior high. John Draman Mahama added Arabic so that our Muslim brothers and sisters could find it, you know, friendly, sending their words to these schools so that they could also get the chemistry lab and the biology lab, physics labs that have been incorporated in these edifices mm -hmm. so that they'll be also be able to enjoy that quality education. John Draman Mahama now went to work and started expanding training colleges. John Draman Mahama said, we will need human resource because you want to make education free. You need teachers and you need quality teachers because we're going to make it free without compromising the quality of education as it is today that it has been compromised. And so what did he do? The, the GET fund, the, the student loan, was increased with attractive conditions. And then they analyzed and realized that if we took away the, the allowance, it was not going to allow him or the government to increase intake into our training colleges and our nursing training colleges. Remember that at the time, we had even the, the, the doctor um, assistants, mm -hmm. and then we had the ward assistants, which the MPP came and they have actually, you know, canceled those type of training in our country. When that was done, a school that was taking about 300 students or trainees, it was now taking about 5,000 students. So it gave room for more people to go into our training colleges. Yes. John was building hospitals. He was building polyclinics. He was building sick compounds, which was going to also be headed by these uh, uh, ward assistants and, and doctor assistants. That, you see, when they talk about Social intervention, that is a social intervention. Where you take health care to the doorstep of the Ghanaian. So he has built a lot of cheap compounds. And then he added your new advance. All these things, you see, when you have a prudent leader, a leader who means well for his people, he, he, he takes the analysis from kinder, comes through to senior high, and building these schools to make them free. Now, when they're finished, where are they going to go? They have to go to tertiary institutions. The tertiary institutions, when they're finished, they have to get jobs. So, you know, let's, let's improve our polytechnic systems. Let's build more universities. Let's complete those that have started. Let's build more hospitals. So the healthcare will also be good for us. And then those who are coming out will be able to, you know, get jobs to do. Let's improve agriculture. Let's build our roads. And so this was John's concept where computers were given and um, test books and what have you. Nanado comes and rushes through and then he gives us a traffic light that has no red. And I've always been saying that, you see, I don't trust him one bit. Anything he says, anything he says, must be decoded. So when they said gold and green, Mr. Radio, then they asked me why. I said, look, me, I'm from a village. So when I was coming to the city, I was taught that when I see a traffic light, there is something I should know. Red means stop. Yellow means get ready. Green means go, go, go. And go. <laughs> so it taught me that any traffic light without red 
They say either the car will hit me or the car will hit another car. So if you, you, you bring a spoiled traffic light to educational system, you are telling Ghanaians in a coded form that you are going to crush the educational system in a country. You are going to crush our children's education. You are going to crush the future of Ghana. And that's exactly what has happened. It has crushed. Recently, the NAT secretary was, you know, on, on air saying that, yeah. look, the education is it, coming to its knees. You see, you cannot cheat nature. Ghana is not alone. We have not actually um, 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 negotiated with God for God to pause time for us. Our children are growing. The world is becoming a global village. Why are we doing so to our children? Nanado is only fulfilling a childhood fantasy, so he can't handle the educational system. He cannot handle the security of our country. Our children are being killed. Women are being raped. Women are being kidnapped. Our, our husbands are being killed. The security themselves, the police officers are being killed. The young men and women in our country today are being killed. Journalists who come from abroad and they are killed. Police officers will be in vans protecting bunnies and they are killed. Meanwhile, Nanadu promised that they were going to give bulletproof to every police officer and helmets. They are building security in their stomachs and in their bank accounts. And so they don't care about the security officers. So these police officers cannot protect us. And I'll quote the former IGP who said that if you don't want where there's crime, go to heaven. Go to heaven. So it was an insult to Ghanaians. And that is exactly, he spoke the mind of President Nanado. He spoke his mind. And he spoke the mind of the one who today wants to come and lead us, Dr. Mahamudu Baumlaya. Because go to Google. They say he's the biggest liar in Ghana. I didn't say it. It's on Google. Google. And if I need an information, I'll Google. So if I need information on him and I'll go to tell me he's a liar, biggest liar. You see. And so, and so, and so for, 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 for President Anado, your IGP says he can't protect us. The police can't. Definitely they can't because you have refused to resource them. To you rather them. resource your hoodlums and your criminals, your vigilantes, so that they can do your bit for you. Yeah, so but Dr. Anabisio, with all these things uh, playing or coming into play, how does that uh, motivate the NDC women's wing in going into 2024? Well, what, what it, it motivates us because, you see why I'm enumerating those things. Because yeah. if you're a woman and you go to the market to sell, you roast plantains, you know, under the hot sun by the roadside to sell. You hawk to sell to save money so that you can take your child to school. Your security is compromised. Your children's security compromised. That of your husband compromised. Your child's education compromised. The healthcare system, if I get pregnant, is compromised. I don't know whether I'm going to survive, I'm going to die. Trade compromised. Then I know that we are not safe. And so we have to work hard as women. We have to go around and then expose the ills of this government, encourage women and give them hope. We have to move, as I said, from market to market, farm to farm, lorry station to lorry station, house to house. If it's room to room, we shall go. To make sure that Ghanaians will have that hope that there is something good that is coming. The lies that they used to cover the good of John Muhammad, we 
we will continue to expose those lies. We will continue to talk about our people's manifesto. Because the people's manifesto still stands for us. President Mahama was going to implement each one of them. Those were not um, promises that he sat in some room and came up with. He went out and said, speak out, and we spoke out. After that, he met organized groups. That is why there was something for Okada, there was something for everybody. And because he's been in government before, and he's not the type who will say what he can't do, or you'll see a dear you. If you said you want this pen, or you wanted this pen and this glass, you say, okay, no. You see, if we're in government, um, we'll be able to give you this pen, but not this reading glasses. These reading glasses may have to go to Jerome, and then, you know, and, and so once you agree, then he knows that what he's going to put in there, he could have done it. There was a big push, which was going to create jobs for, for, for the youth and 250,000 jobs per year. And it was very, very feasible. He was going to do the infrastructure development. And you know, when you go into infrastructure, um, 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 the ripple effects that comes out, it's not just the bridge that you are building, is the suppliers, the loading boys, the transport officers, with the women who sell, and what have you. Just think about it. The good things for the importers, for the car dealers and all. So this is the message that we're going to carry out. The market women credit union that he was going to prepare for us. The free primary health care that was coming on board. The four months maternity leave for women. Yeah, that four months maternity leave. Dr. Hanabisu, let me, I have a question on that. But before we hit that question, um, don't tell me like... one paternity leave. Don't try that. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm, I'm in family, and I know here they have parking for women. Paternity so leave. Is there... <laughs> <laughs> we will come to that. But it looks as if uh, uh, Nana Akufuado has a lot of uh, respect. Uh, for women, and she has placed a lot of women in very sensitive position in his government. Let, let, let's just have a clip, uh, Mr. Producer. Let's have a clip of uh, his encounter with uh, the World Women's Program, and then uh, we Back talk of yes. <laughs> Big definition of what political action is then. P political action, which women brings working about in their communities, communities working together. They're all women of that is political action, but you are looking for using the levers in the society that allow you to get control of the process of decision making. If you can't okay. make the decisions, you're not able to enforce the views that you want. You can create the atmosphere, okay. but at the end of the day, you need to be able okay. to make the decision. He has President, made the okay. decision. President Kovato, I think, what do you think? Women deliver? We give you A plus for effort, but next year we want to see the results. We'll see. Give you just a half a phrase. Well, I, you know, I just, I think you and I need to have dinner. Um, but, but I, what I genuinely think is important is this is a sentiment that's shared by a lot of people, and it's fundamental that we begin to understand and we begin to, to explain in a, in a way that people can actually understand how much systems have been shaped to ensure that women do not get to be in positions of power. Yes, because. Because it's incredibly important to recognize that there are dynamic, incredible women that the door remains closed to. And a so reason, how is he going to open? But that's yes. by, by, how is he going to I'm open? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Okay. Okay. You're not telling okay. me. I'm telling you. you. What you're saying will not open the door. Stop talking over me. I'll tell you. What you're saying will not open the door. We need some democracy. We need some democracy on this panel. I think it's how important. How is he going to open? Okay. It's incredibly okay. important for male allies in positions of power, like yourself, to look around and recognize the, imp the impactful, incredible, dynamic women in their communities and amplify them, not empower them because they have agency, but amplify them and put them in positions of power. That's how it changes. It's yes. on YouTube. So Allah has invited you to dinner 
and Natasha's coming to visit. Yeah. <laughs> and Monsieur le Premier ministre, si vous voulez ajouter un, un mot simplement, yeah, just, just... un mot. Doctor Anna Vici, <laughs> I believe you know this I'm is. Taking, a... You know what I'm shaking my head? No. <laughs> the way that young lady just embarrassed our president. Look at the way President Nanadu was so disorganized. This is a president of a country. A country. Like, Somebody's inviting him to lunch. No, to he's a Dinner. Serious. You see, the lady is an Arab. She's a Muslim. I mean, I wouldn't say Arab. She's a Muslim. Okay? And from a, 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 a Muslim lady to tell you I'm taking you to dinner, it means a lot. Because he, that young lady couldn't believe her eyes and ears. <laughs> that this, this man sitting there is a president of a country. And excuse me. My little boy respects women. And you see, he said it's not about representation. That's, I think we even held a press conference on that and demanded that he should come and apologize. Naturally, he wouldn't because he's arrogant. He doesn't respect yeah. us. You see, he said it's not about representation. It's about decision making. Yeah. That the women in Ghana are not there yet. To make decisions, sit at the head of the table to make decisions for political parties and government. And so I don't care if he brings 200 women in his government and he has only four men. Those men are those who are going to make the decision, not if 200 women. In fact, he had he declared that, that Madam Honorable Freeman, who is his chief of staff, is just a representation. She's just a statue. His own yeah. wife is nothing in his house. The uh, Ayokobo Chue who went the other day, she went there with some written script from the men in, his, in her government. Chew and poor. Because she's nothing. She's in Akufaro's government. She's just there representing women for it to say there's women. But you, you dare not make any decision. And so he respects us not. He has zero respect for women. You see, listen to Nanato. Nanato, you are not popular in the Zongos. Oh, I've had a lot of girlfriends in the Zongos. Nana, you are weak. Go and ask the women. An accomplished former minister dies. Who he worked with. And only the, his tribute had to come and did, and this, the, your viewers and listeners will pardon me. I'm quoting him. He said, oh, she had big bottom, big bottles. Is that what that you saw in the woman? Is that what that Nanadu you saw in the woman? Why do you want to use sexuality to describe the efficiencies of women? So you go to the biggest gathering of women in the world. Women Deliver. Listen, that's a Women Deliver conference. Then you went there to disgrace and talk the women of Ghana down. And it will affect any Ghanaian woman who will go out there to go and compete for an international position. Because Nanado has gone there to talk us down. To say that we are nothing. And we are not there yet. And so the women of Ghana, we need to rise up today. And through that, don't tell me that Nanadri is not going to be on the ballot. Let me tell you that this man, if you trust him, you die early. <laughs> because he's the one who's going to supervise the 2024 elections. Yeah. And if we are not careful, he will cause confusion with his criminals, hoodlums, vigilantes, and say there's confusion in Ghana and she all hand you over. Yeah, that's possible. Chira, sakabo, yeah. Sefini, finish. Okay? Or he wants to bring Baulaya as his puppet so that he'll continue to rule through him. Recently, when this guinea crew came, 
he realized that there's some there, there are some cool leaders and cool leaders. You see how he rushed to refund his uh, um, um what was the name? Um, the excess the increase. Uh, yeah. And he was not ashamed. He said, "Oh, I said they shouldn't pay. They paid into my account." I said, "Oh, really? So you are very appointed. They don't even respect you. You are telling the whole world that you, as the commander in chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, the president of Ghana, a chairman of a national security council, the man who rents or hires um, um, jets so that he can yes. bath inside and sleep inside and chill with." whoever he wants to chill inside. The man who can scam the whole nation and fly a Falcon to Togo, pack the Falcon and then fly a private jet and use the taxpayer's money and who come out and say, we don't have textbooks for students. President Anado, you spoke and they didn't listen and they dumped the money in your account. We started screaming as a people long time. Your wife, you wanted to not pay your wife because you, you are not responsible enough to take care of your home. So you want we Ghanaians to come and pay your wife. The man chop money. Plus out of Baumia. Oh, don't do that. But date it to 2017. We scream. Now your wife got angry. It's like a child. You, took, you take to the store. He, the child wants this chocolate. You get the chocolate. The child has seen this chocolate. Then you say, I want it, so no, you can't have it. And I won't find my media, my poor mom. Yes, and then I don't like it. You children do that. That's exactly what um, um, Mami Rebecca Kufuado did. Then you took the salary increase. When you increase your salary, remember that the workers were crying. You insulted them. You bastardized them. You bastardized the country. Now Mama D comes and says that the president increased the salary and did not increase their own. And so they said, hmm. now you realize that the coup is coup. <laughs> the leader of that he is the leader of the coup. He didn't scam people for them to come and use their guns to kill people for him. He led and then he did now you rush to come and refund the money. <laughs> and then you tell us that they didn't listen to you, so they don't even respect you as a president. And so for me as a woman. I tell people that I don't think about anything but 2024. There should be a civil uprising for the sake of my children and my children's children, for the sake of Mother Ghana, for tomorrow. We have to go out there, spread the good news, and resist your precious rule. And I've always been saying that the NDC has been very undiplomatic. So when John Muhammad said do or die, it's holistically. Just as when he tackles education, health system, what have you, it's holistic. Because I faced a bullet 2020 when they were shooting and I realized that I had to actually go to the commander. I just said, that's a commander. Shoot me. If there's anybody to be shot, it's me. Shoot me. I, John is not here to defend himself. He's on the ballot. Okay? I'm here on the ballot. Aside that, I'm here as a leader of NDC. I'm mm -hmm. protecting the property of my party. And so if there's anybody to be shot here, shoot me. Not these ones. You said these are followers. If you shoot one, more will come. But if you shoot the leader, they'll go away. There is a matter we've not got in there. And I said, yes, you have. We are not at war. So why are your men shooting bullets and then picking? Because the, uh, the, the agents realize that you stolen on the pink sheet, so they are bringing their tally cards and they're rushing the, their arm. You are shooting. But places, they killed. And so if you sit down today without moving, without working, I was beaten as I was always so gone, and I refused to go to the police. I told my sister, my men go. I said, I'm not go. Now I know that I don't have to go to a polling center unprepared. And the coup you have to go fully prepared. And that is very true because uh, we saw it with the uh, Ayaosu West Wagon. And even the 2020 election, it exhibited itself. Going to 2024, we believe that uh, if the NDC is not on its feet, it might be a different story again. So let's the see. How are we going today? It's going to be all die, all, uh, do or die. 
do or die. It's going to be do or die affair. Do or mm -hmm. die, we are going to be very vigilant. Me sitting here, I've declared that I'm going to be a polling agent. I'm going to tell them, don't send your name money train. I don't want to monitor anything. Because if we have good polling agents, you don't need money train. I want to be a polling agent. If I don't have to be at my village, I'll vote and fly out to wherever you want me to go, but I'm going to be a polling agent. And, you know, I employ all of you to prepare yourself that you come down, you be polling agents at your various branches. So when we are done, we say do or die. Remember, we'll be leaving our children home, our own mothers, our the sick people on the hospital beds. So I'm going there as a soldier on the field. And some of us, we don't fight to retreat. If I go and you kill me, but we're able to liberate Ghana from the hands of the oppressor, from the hands of a tyrant and his cohorts, I will go peacefully, knowing that behind me, those coming will be free. Definitely. The only person that I think that we have to protect a lot will be my John Dramani Mahama. The one who is going to see to the good implementation of all the good things that we have in our manifesto. But for me, I have to be a soldier on the field. And it's going to be a do or die because we will stop the thief free and we will go and say, look, if they bring us peace, we shall meet them with peace. We shall also train our vigilantes or Tom. And nobody mm -hmm. should tell us we should stop because Nanado has not stopped. Nanado uses the criminals and the police and, and uses also the, the army. In fact, but, for the army, uh, but they are so sorry for them. No, 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 you signed a, a peace accord to not to venture into vigilantism. When did I so, say? I mean, I mean, NDC as a political party, you did Nanado that. Nanado signed. Nanado signed. And the NDC signed. That's why I say he's very indisciplined. You, you can't even look at this COVID. He said the rules. You come and do fellow Ghanaians. In fact, he will decide to do a recording in the morning. And he wastes our time as Ghanaians. And we sit down there and we'll be waiting for 10 p.m. to listen to his tolly. But we, we are very sure that uh, his attitude and conduct is very known. And we should have been very careful about it. Because uh, if you look at it, the vigilantes of the MPP has been um, incorporated into the security services. So they come out in uniforms and they are doing distractions. Now we are in the opposition. How are we going to cope up with them? They have all the ammunition. They have everything. They have the they, law backing them. You have the president. No, there's no them. law backing them. They, there's no um, law in Ghana that backs them. There is, a, well, uh, they are, now they come they in national the security. The of the people becomes the, the law. Yes. There's no law backing them. And so what let's we are, see. Let me, you see, let me let me say this to you. Okay, 2020 elections. I announced my presence. Even during the registration, I said, look, I have registered so and I have unregistered cutlasses because they are not to be registered. I was beaten at I was West I went there as a polling agent to protect that which belongs to my political party. And Nanado sent his criminals to come and attack me. So it means that uh, under Nanado, the all die be die president, the president who rejoices when human blood is pure, the president who rejoices when there's violence, the president who kills Ghanaians and scams us with committees and commissions. I will not go unprepared to enjoy that which the constitution gives to me self-defense yes i'll have 25 shopping cutlasses in my car and me i'm not a macho woman hmm? so maybe i can slap some people but it's not everybody i can slap so me to look for somebody who will slap those who will slap me no, 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 because no, 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 under, President, uh, no, uh, under President Nanado, you can't, you, you see, let me say this thing, okay. I was threatened in front of police and military 
that of Uganda. They did nothing. They did nothing. Then said, yeah, then I said, okay, if 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 you gun me down, bow me, I'll die, but I'll go down with five of you. Then they said they will crash me. They'll crash my car. It was said in front of the security. So me too. When they said, I said okay, about three or four days after, I saw the incumbent MP and the deputy minister who promised to crash me on the road, speeding and we're facing. So I asked my brother that when we get to him, face him. So I said, well, I said when we get to him, face him. And it was a highway, Tepagosu Road at them. It wasn't Anadu who constructed it, so nobody should give him credit. Yeah, it's a very oh, yeah, good one. And when we got closer, I said, move into his lane. So we move into his lane to face him and he ran into the bush. Then he went and made police case. When they came to me, I asked them, it was in front of you that he said you crashed me. It wasn't it? They said, yes. What did you do? You did nothing. So I met him and I offered myself to be crushed. So I had no intention of running off the road. I had only one intention for him to crash me. So his, the decision of going into the bush was his own. It wasn't me. I didn't run him off. I meant business. When he said that you crash me, I meant business that he should crash me. So I was facing him with my car. Because he said it in front of you people, nothing happened. What I'm trying to say here is that 2024 is going to be a do or die affair. Because the time I leave home, I'll tell my mother. I'll tell my siblings. I'll tell my children. And look, my child will tell you, I keep telling him, when mama goes out to go and do party work, if I come back, thank God, you can only pray to God to keep me alive. I've told my mother that when I go out, the demonstration, I said, look, I'm not going to stay back because I'm a leader, so I'll lead. So if there's a bullet, I should take it first. So when your daughter is out there working, you can only pray or tie your belly. I haven't seen my child, my little boy, for the past three years. He was five when I saw him. He's eight years now. I haven't seen him because I have to work. And I have to now create that atmosphere where he'll not be too attached to me so that if I'm killed tomorrow, he'll not be affected. What I'm trying to say is that for the sake of that boy, for the sake of boys like him, for the sake of the agent, for the sake of the people living with disability, for the sake of my sisters out there struggling to make it, for the sake of the women who have been kidnapped and killed, for the sake of the men who have been kidnapped and killed, for the sake of our educational system, for the sake of Mbaka Ghana, for the sake of justice, freedom, development in our country, as women in the NDC, we are poised. And I'm telling you, it's not just me. I have very vibrant women. Look, if you go to the grants, if you go to the branches, we have very powerful women organizers. Great. I was going to ask a question about how this message has got into the branch level. Oh, no, you see, let me, let me see. You see the structure, how we work. Going into 2020, for instance, all my women organizers, 2020, 2019, June, were trained. I took all of them, the regional women organizers and their deputies to Tamale. And the constituency women organizers of, the, of Tamale, Metropolis, and the Northern and um, um, Eastern Corridor were brought three days training. National chairman was there. We flew in resource person from Accra, uh, 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 majority leader, honorable um, Harun Edrisu also came. They trained all of us. Certificates were given. And these our women went down to their constituencies and trained them. And their constituency women organizers also went down and trained their branches. So what we do is that you know, if I'm facing north, then now I'll be visiting constituencies. Because I don't believe in a three days work. You see, when we are going to election, from June, everybody, they've made up their minds. So the work for 2024 started from 2020. And they're still continuing. That is the organizational thing. And so, like, after, after the election, when we went round, we revisited some of it, the training we had, the women, those who testified that they use it and it helped them. And then now we looked at, because you see, in politics and, and the way these situations are, 
where a kufuadu keeps confusing us every day with more scandals you will not be able you cannot implement what you implemented yesterday yeah. so you analyze your current situation you look at what you had yesterday then you look at what you have today then you fo- you, you make a focus so going forward looking at this leadership looking at that what do we expect and so we start putting okay. certain measures in place which we have already started so it's not everything that you can actually i'm, I'm not that type okay so i can only give an overview but you are not sure. going to all your asanas out there for them sure and so for for the work let, I, you see i always say this that i'm very grateful to my women the women work very hard we do and we are also grateful to all the husbands out there who are married to women organizers and women who work and they are not in women organizers but they join us to work and i'm very grateful to our children who understood us that mama had to go and they wouldn't see mama but they knew that mama was out there the places that we visit the places that some of my women visit if i say it today you squeeze your face. Sometimes you have to go to some jungle, some place, because Charlie, you have to go and sit there, be like them. You get Definitely. what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you have to buy credit for their eyes. Eyes. Because you need them. And so the women, we are saying that we want to save Mother Ghana. She's one of us. And Ghana is crying blood. We want to save our children. We want to save our parents. We want to save the vulnerable. So we are trickling down with our message, but we also prepared to face whatever consequences and resist any oppressor, anyone who tries to intimidate us. So we are going out there to fight for the party, but we are working today. And it's not just, you see, when you said a party, people say, oh, would oh, the NDC team? No, I love Ghana, that's why I love the NDC. I'm very patriotic. I love my country. Trust me, I'm in love with Ghana. So I'm in, I'm in love with the NDC, and I want to die for the NDC because the NDC is the only party that can actually save Ghana. NDC is the only party that can, that actually comes and we see real development, the true meaning of freedom and justice, where you are not afraid as a businessman because you belong to MPP. Where if you have a wife who is MPP, you are not afraid. Where the journalist is not afraid to speak his mind and to put government in check. Because nobody is going to kill that journalist as Ahmed Swale was killed. Nobody is going to brutalize and intimidate journalists as they did to the CTFM, Manasya Suri, and I think that guy for always forget his name. The one who did the Galamse thing from um, Upper East. Recently, uh, re- thirty. Yeah, good. Then recently, yeah. look at Kennedy Japan, the one who threatens and they kill. Said if he was the president, he would kill uh, this Joy FM journalist who journalist. reported the draft. The draft state, yeah. Draft and you see what has happened. That time when he came, they told me that oh dear, a good father baby. I can't say look, I don't trust him because he's never been truthful. That's why I have a problem with the Methodist moderator. We said those who 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 criticize a kufuado are witches or something do, do how look at look me me you see this paper here if i start yeah. mentioning it i'll just tell you go to man, their manifesto one region one theater page 172. Hmm? it was promised we can go on and on tell me this is something that probably i'll scan and send to you you guys okay. will have to look at it and ask yourself if you can trust a kufuado I also went to a commission scam. As I was say, killings committee scam. And 2020, when a Kufuado, that one didn't even set a committee. He said few regrettable deaths. And my response to him then and now is that when he became president, his wife who died 25 years ago, he went to he took our money and went to Mampon to go and rebury bones and do some monument. Was that one not one few regrettable death? You kill us to come and say few regrettable death. A drug came. Then I said, look, it's another scam. Committee is a scam. What has happened? Nothing will happen. Because he knows he can scam us. 
A good for others, you see, he said, okay, can, 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 when you speak sweet the people believe you. I build factory for when you know he's not nothing. Is he not a scammer? If I come and paint your house, and then I come and stand in front of your house tomorrow, because you couldn't paint your house, I painted it, so I'm claiming ownership to have built your house. Then I'm a scammer. And also, if you have a father, okay, who will go out there to go and borrow money to come and take care of you, he's crying. The father gets the money, and the next time that you realize that instead of the money borrowed to take care of you, your education, your mother's job, what have you, your father has gone to rent the latest Mercedes Benz or the latest car in town and is driving around because that is his fantasy to be bathing in a car. Then that your father is unwise. President Anado knows that if we use incompetence for him, we are doing a very big favor. And we are doing a disfavor to the word incompetence because he's not very close to that one. In fact, in his failure, he has failed. That is why he keeps now, every now and then, mentioning John Dramani Mahama. He should stop mentioning his name and you should concentrate on government. He has turned himself to clearing agent. Clear every corrupt leader. Clear, clear every corrupt appointee that he has. Look at the recent Sputnik 5. The same thing. You went to a, a, a Brekum and even compromised and corrupted the Brekum mind for this man to lie. That is how dangerous Anando is. And Anando is being backed by Baumia, and Anando is pushing Baumia to come so that they can continue to perpetuate their, their evil deeds in our country. And nobody wants to talk. When you talk, they say you are insulting. No, this is not insult. If you do something and describe your actions, and you tell me I'm insulting you, then you are walking insult yourself. If I describe what you are doing is an insult, then you are walking insult yourself. You, if I, you are you insult person, you are just you just insult standing there. That is the president, and he knows that he's just living a fantasy, a childhood, not dreaming his dream. So he knows next to nothing when it comes to governance. And I dare him to write a statement from his hands. Eh? Half a page. He can't. That you are going is to a, add something. That is a wonderful presentation, Dr. Hanabisio. And I believe strongly that uh, definitely if we want to continue, we'll continue till tomorrow. But notwithstanding that, I think uh, some viewers have sent in some questions. We would look at a few of them. That's fine. And then... Uh, I think we need to have you another time. This is not enough. We want to find out on the ground, especially at the branch level, the world level. I won't be surprised that we will have women coming as uh, polling agents and all the women we are the uh, constituency polling centers or collation centers uh, for the collation of the final results mm -hmm, on the, mm -hmm, come December mm -hmm. 2024. Yeah, the women say that's what they want to do. They Good. say we are going, we, we, you see, we, 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 we are going to defend the property of the NDC. We are the mothers who are going to defend the chickens. So you, the cops, you can decide to stay home. But as women, we are going there so that our homes will be protected. So a lot of my women are ready and poised to be polling agents. And me, I'm going to be a polling agent, by all means. If God grants me health and life. Someone just wrote that, uh, my sister, the, the hypocrite Ashanti still loves Nana Ado. Despite his arrogance, Nana will not change until we vote out MPP. How will how will the women's wing support that? That is a question from a, a, a viewer, and I think um, uh, this you have answered this question already. Nana do has no clue how to govern. Neither that that's how any conception of uh, any discourse no. All the others are compliments. Everybody's so excited. Um, yeah, yeah, Sanjua, Dr. Hanabisu, Trasu, 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 everybody is excited. Um, I think we just only have to look at the, the one with the Ashanti region's uh, uh, comment. How are we going to go into Ashanti region? Because uh, they love and the Nanado, irrespective of uh, his arrogant or arrogant posture and uh, his incompetence. 
Um, I, I, I don't think it would be very fair to say that Ashanti region love him irrespective of his you know, and it also it wouldn't also be fair to say that Ashanti is the vote for him. Definitely is their stronghold. Okay. And so we have some who still vote for him. I was in Kumase when he came there to fraudulently open Casa Preco as one office. When do one you want to one factory. That's why I use fraudulent because to me it's fraud. Yeah. If you arrest the Nigerian force, that you should arrest yourself. And it has caused so much traffic that is around the Buakwa. And you yeah. could hear how people were insulting him. Ashanti region had excesses in ballot papers, presidential alone, I think over 300,000 or whatever. And so you see, when we say a do or die affair, we are telling them that not a single ballot will be stolen. Because stealing is not when you take my own. Stealing is when you add what that, that which does not. Because we are not going to allow it. But again, um, we are on the ground in Ashanti region. The party is doing a lot of reorganization. And we are putting seven measures in place to check ourselves as a political party in the region. And we are poised to make a rule. We are not going to do what they did in Volta region, where a whole group of people have been denied the right to representation in parliament because they wanted to by all means steal mm -hmm. away oh, oh, because they know they didn't win oh. and the inconsistent dishonest president with that shame will say that oh with the winning of oh, why we we are making inroads in, in voter region who told you, you know you you stole you know you robbed you know the trick you did so we will work and we are working. And you see, we we those at the top there, we are just the leaves. So we are working with a grassroots to make sure that the right nutrients is taken from the soil. Yes, we believe, and I always say this, that a good farmer is the one that when he's given a fertile land, a fertile soil, does not go to sleep. But he, he or she tills the land and works tirelessly until harvest time. Then you can have a bumper harvest. With all the scandals, with everything going on, Ghanaians are tired, Ghanaians are fed up. And Akufuadu's posture as a leader, the disrespect, the impunity, the tifri, the, the, the disregard for human rights, Everything has actually made even our young ones to lose hope and trust in political leadership. That is why that explains this 80 or 70 convoy after the coup, the, the Guinea coup, because Ghanaians were hailing the Guinea coup and he felt that maybe somebody was attacking him on the road. No, 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 no. Oh, wow. So, and, so, I think, uh... and so we will, we as women, as I said, we are on the ground. We have started can organize ourselves, encourage ourselves, and you know, to make sure that we encourage our branches and get them up. When I say we, my branch women organizers, they have been tasked to make sure that their branches are vibrant, not only women. We are moving together with our men. And on this note, I want to uh, wish my deputy, one of my deputy regional men organizers of um, Western North, um, I wish SPD recovery. I'm very sorry that I'm not home at this moment. Um, there was some 
party activity where you know they had to cook and there was a gas explosion uh, yeah and she's got you know gas burns um, mm -hmm. i'm very very sorry I've, I've actually felt a bit down today <laughs> I, I almost said i was not gonna come on because i felt very bad but um by the grace of god i have <clears throat> my deputy in charge of um, western north abigail i think she taking care of it on my behalf. And my coordinator, Charles Asiedu, is also on. But just want to wish, use this opportunity to thank her, thank all those women um, for the sacrifices that they make for us. We are seated here talking, and we don't even know that. One of them was even poisoned, you know, and she died, you know, doing party work because she was a very vibrant branch women's organizer. And so we do that on the very quiet, and it's imperative to say thank you to these women, home and abroad, mm -hmm. you know, and to say that we thank you, I appreciate you so much, and um, that you should continue to support the party. We are the mothers, we cannot give up now. Um, we we need to encourage you guys to step out there and fight. For definitely, that. definitely. You could have been said in a better way than this, but there is a lot of greetings from uh, Montreal, Canada, from Italy, they are all over the world, and uh, Everybody's excited with our mother uh, who speaks with passion for our party, the National Democratic Congress. Uh, Asunaba Yabu, I think this is your, your comment has been has ended the program on a very lively note. And uh, Dr. Hanavis, you were very grateful for your time. You still owe me the dinner, remember? <laughs> yes, we will do that. <laughs> you still owe me the dinner. And so I, I, I want to thank you guys also. I want to thank um, um, Ghanaians in Germany, um, went to Paris and, you know, and went to the Netherlands. I'm here. Um, the Italians said they were organizing, but I said not on this trip. I have to go back home. They are they are still communicating with me background on it, so it's not too <laughs> yeah, late. Yeah, so we organize, I organize and come, I organize and go to Italy. But I want to thank you. I want to thank all of you, and I want to thank <clears throat> the German chapter, all the NDC faithfuls in Germany. Your Zungo caucus have been fantastic. I'm I'm most grateful. And as I said to uh, my sister and your sister Marian. Mrs. Marian Quasin Obongo, she, yeah, she she has been hosting me all these days that I've been here. It's not been easy. I've given her so much pressure. And I wonder why she doesn't push me out and say, go away with your pressure. She's been fantastic. And you know, my women organizer also, Auntie Grace. And not to all of you, I just want to say on behalf of the party, you know, on behalf of the NDC, I want to say thank you because I know that I'm being handled not because of cannabis you guys because of the NDC. And so on behalf of the party, I want to say thank you. And I just want to encourage all of you to say that there's more that unites us than that we divide us. People ask, what is this? Why do I have this? I've not had it easy going through immigration um, security checks. Yeah. Coming here. My head, you know, they pass machines. They want to know this is my natural hair. It's not any Brazilian dead woman's hair. It's threat. And I did it this way. I call it unity of purpose. And it's for a reason. You pull the one at the back to here. Maybe it's uncomfortable. If you leave it there, it's more comfortable. It, 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 it feels good. But I, I, I bring them together. I tie them. You know, it's tied. And then we stitch. Okay, so they are united together. You need your purpose. Because the purpose is to have a pony. That is African. And so we should move with unity of purpose. I don't have to like you, secretary, to work with you. You don't have to like me to work with me. But we have something we need to liberate Ghana. Mm -hmm. And so I'll urge all of us to love our country enough and to love our party enough. To let it go if I slapped you. For me to also let it go if you slap me. I always say that if you want to harm the NDC, harm me, don't harm the party. Because in my political 
Bible and Quran. There's nothing like forgiveness. And we should take that step. And to all of you, prepare yourselves. Save money. Take your annual leave. Go back home. Go to your branch. Go to your constituency. Go to your region. By all means, make a difference. And that small drop of water will make a mighty ocean. And so please, to my NDC brothers here in Germany and all those viewing and sending the comments, I say thank you. I want us to come together and work together in oneness, in a unity of purpose for Agenda 2024. And I pray that we all will go with one voice and support our leader, President John Dramani Mahama, because he has an unfinished business that he needs to finish and take Ghana to where he wanted to take us to. So I want to use this opportunity to say thank you very much. I appreciate all of you. And on behalf of the NDC, our national chairman, the general secretary, and, and Thai Fek, I want to say thank you very much. Akwe, Baka, muchas gracias. Muito obrigado. You have you have not added a German, so I think. Uh, thank, thank, is it Danke? Danke, <laughs> Danke, Sean. Okay, thank you very much, Honorable Doctor uh, Hannah Bisu. We've been very privileged to have you this evening, and for all our viewers up there, the underground show has come to stay. This is just the the starting point. Remember to make time with us again next week, the same time on the same channel, and you will never regret it. We are very grateful to our producer. Chris Payne and uh, all the technical men behind the scenes. To wherever you are, have a blessed evening and enjoy yourself. Thank you very much once again. Let's see you need to